right, let's begin this painting. You can see all the description below what materials I have been using. Now I do want to go over the colors. These are the Windsor Newton Art Artisan brand, which is the water mixable oils. I have titanium white, cadmium yellow, medium yellow ochre, permanent alizarin crimson. This is the thalocyanin green, which is the blue hue the French ultramarine, which is a very nice blue, and I have a little bit of cadmium red. So to begin the painting, I am going to be using the Simply Simmons brushes. They're flat, the ones that I have, and you can just see the description uh, below, all the details on the sizes that I'm gonna be using. The panel that I'm using, again, the description is below, is a linen panel that's universally primed, and it's a 10 by 10. So this is a rather large brush for the size of the panel, but I do like to start my paintings with as large brushes as I can so I can avoid details. So there's nothing wrong with painting details, it's just that I want to try to avoid that. So let's begin with a mix. And I, I like to do my dark mix with the um, thalocyanin green and the alizarin crimson. That gives, in my mind, the darkest dark I can get, because I don't have black in my palette, but I can get pretty dark with this mixture. And to start with, we're gonna just use it to create a dark uh, washy layer. So as you can see, there's a lot of water here in this mix. And there's probably a little bit more bias to the green, so I can just be adding the different ones. I have to tell you that you just need to get used to the consistency of your own brand of paints. Uh, in this particular um, brand that I'm using, the yellow ochre, the permanent alizarin crimson are uh, more buttery and a little bit less stiff than the thalocyanin green, as you can see, it's pretty stiff. So you could mix it with their water mixable linseed oil. I just don't want to do it because I have a vertical palette and it's just gonna run down. So I am just trying to grab it as best as I can without, without pushing too hard on this vertical palette, anyway. Uh, that's just a detail that has not much to do with the design. So let's uh, let's just go on. I'm just going to establish a, a line here. This is going to be a canal view. You have an advantage over me. You know how this painting looks because you can go to the end of the video and you can see what I painted. Uh, I don't I don't know how what's going to come out, but I think it's going to come out nice. All right, so I want to establish some darks in here. It's a base of um, dark that I like to use in my paintings, always as a wash, which is a transparent wash. And sometimes I actually let it show. Sometimes I do uh, change it a little bit uh, in terms of painting on top. The, the being water soluble oils, they actually dry a bit faster than uh, than when you use the regular oils because the water evaporates a bit faster. I think that's probably as much as I want to do in terms of the dark wash. And, and you can probably see in the video that, um, I don't know if you have enough light. I paint with uh, natural light. Um, but what I'm doing here is basically a dark uh, wash, but it's, bias to the green side. That's fine, you could bias it to any side if you're painting with me. For the darks, I think I want to now leave it that way and I'm going to use now a smaller brush, a size six, uh, because I want to establish some bright orange colors of the fall that was the scene that I was actually seeing. So I'm gonna get alizarin crimson, and yellow ochre. Uh, this makes a, 
an orange that's not as bright as, as if I was using the cadmiums, but I want to leave that punchy uh, area of the cadmium for later. And I'm going to establish that right there. So a bit more of the right there. That's gonna be one. And then we have a series of also some fall colors in here. These are smaller trees. And as you can see, painting a la prima, uh, I am switching the brush, but I want to leave those brush strokes. It's one of the ideas that I have is to make sure that I can start painting a little bit more loose and just create the impression of the image that I have with uh, less details. And that's the, the idea. So as I mentioned before, if, if you see the painting at the very end and you don't like it, so you know that you don't need to waste much time. All right, then we are going to have some lighter areas on the back. And to make this lighter and have the feeling that it's going in the back, this is basically going to be like the bank of a canal. I believe I'm gonna put a little boat here. I'm not sure yet, but I think it makes a very nice, interesting uh, feeling there. And then there's a bunch of uh, buildings in here. That's a boring scene, but we're gonna try to make it less boring. And the light's coming from here, so it's hitting uh, these trees on here. So I will be putting the lights later. But as we go in the far, uh, it becomes less saturated and a little bit bluer. So how do you make orange bluer? Uh, if you mix orange with with blue, it's the opposite, so you get a, a gray. And that's basically what I'm gonna do is just use some of the mix that I had before and probably use a bit more of, of the yellow to make it light. If you have seen other videos that I have, you probably will already uh, remember that I don't like to introduce white too soon in my paintings. So that's a bit too dark. Maybe it's time to introduce the white, but it's it's a nice um, addition of a darker sort of more greenish color, which I can see here, but I don't want to be very specific as I mentioned uh, before. So before we do the far back, before introducing the white, let's just go on with painting a little bit. And off the camera, I just took a little bit of water because these are water mixable oils, so I can mix my gray, my original gray, with that orangey color, and you can see I'm getting sort of uh, a green, greenish color. The reflections in the water are usually a little darker than what they reflect. And that's, that's basically what I want to, to do here, is just give the impression of what we are reflecting. Now that one became a bit uh, more notable in terms of, didn't mean to do it, but I like it. So sometimes when you see something you're painting that you like, just, just skip it. And it would be reflected in the water. All right, so as you can see, I'm just pushing the brush, not being specific about what I am actually just showing here. Uh, but I, it will start making a bit more sense. Reflections go down in the water and darker than what they reflect. All right, so I think it's maybe about time to introduce the, very soon we're gonna be introducing the white, but what I want to do is establish the darker again. So I just noticed that the viridian green is so thick that it actually is still in my larger brush, so I can use that to make it um, a darker color. And it's exactly the same mix as before. As you see, I keep the mixtures in the palette. I don't mind that I don't get pure, pure colors. Actually, I like it better. Pure, pure colors don't, I don't like 
pure, pure colors in all of the painting. It looks more like a cartoon, which is fine if you are wanting to do a cartoon type of painting. But if you want to do something that uh, looks more realistic, in order to make the light colors really pop, the duller colors you use for the rest of the painting make the lighter colors really pop nicely. So that's why, you know, my darks are a mix. And you can see now how this brush has, the, the paint has actually opened it, but it's fine. I don't mind. It, it This is a structure and uh, it may actually make it look more interesting by having those little marks. So that's why I wanted to keep it. And there's going to be a boat here. Uh, I think I think the boat brings an interesting uh, shape. And I will tell you why. Because uh, that little boat was getting all the light and the side of the boat is almost like golden. And it just makes the... I think it makes a nice, interesting um, point of interest in in the painting i'm not sure which is going to end up being the focal point so as you can see i'm just mixing again my mixes of the um alizarin crimson permanent alizarin crimson and the thalocyanin green to make uh, the same dark color but less water this is a lot more buttery creamy nice uh Feeling. I love the feeling of painting like if you're painting with butter. And again, the reflection of that boat it goes down. And usually by, by the side of the canal or the water, you have uh, a lot of uh, dark areas. That's sort of what tells you that's the edge of canal or river. Now, for the water... I like to paint a lot of dark areas and we will get to the blue pretty soon. But I just want to mention my um, my own uh, experience working with this limited color palette. I like the mixture of permanent alizarin crimson and ver the either viridian green or in this case thalocyanin green. These are, these are greens that have a blue bias and the alizarin crimson is a red that has a blue bias. So um, you do get a nice purple color um, because both of them have a bias that's towards the blue. So that's the reason why I, I don't use the alizarin crimson for some of these mixtures, but it's in truth, I am using blue because those two colors have blue in them. So I'm just putting this horizontal lines to show a little bit of uh, the impression of water. And that's what you do. Reflections go up and down, right? And the water go horizontal. And there's just a little tiny bit of the side of that boat and then at the end uh, it it's this is sort of a probably negative painting because by painting the black behind the boat I will make sure that I can give the impression of the boat in there and this is going to be reflection reflection and of course I am now going on top of the oranges that I had before it is okay because as I mentioned to you uh, the reflections are darker than what they reflect than the object that they reflect and by mixing a little bit with this dark color on, on these reflections I can be starting to get that darker area of the reflection. And I think with that, we are ready to introduce white. All right. So 
Now for the wider colors, I am going to start uh, painting a little bit of some of the areas that are reflecting. This, this uh, Windsor Newton, uh, and I did not wash the brush. This is the same brush I used for, for this mixture. So it's, that's okay. I normally don't like to use necessarily white, 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 unless I'm painting something like metallic reflection, um, because it becomes a little bit uh, like chalky. So to get that accent of the white, let's begin with uh, the colors that I wanted to do before, which was that um, there were some trees in the back that were also sort, sort of a fall color trees. So they had some hints of this red and, and ochre, but they were definitely in farther away. The advantage of a gray palette this particular Soho Great Palette has the uh, middle uh, value. So if you go to the value scale, something like this, uh, the middle value is this, and that's the color of my palette. So if I want to go dark, I know it has to be darker than the palette. If I have to go lighter, which is what I want, over here is something in the 20 or 10 percent of the color so it would have to be uh, lighter probably something lighter so that's that's one of the advantages of using this particular color of palette instead of a white palette so there were some trees here and of course, because I did start painting that building there, which is reflecting here, I believe I'm going to have to introduce a dramatic accent of cadmium. Not that dramatic because I've mixed it with the other colors. So we will come back with a little bit of a punch later of this cadmium that will be again reflecting here and reflections go up and then horizontal for the waves in the water. Now, when I'm doing this uh, kind of painting with reflections, I just like to make sure that whatever I'm putting on either top or bottom is making sense. I am not really following particularly my, my photo. Now this particular tree will have more of an accent with the cadmium yellow and it's on this side. Of course I am using, <laughs> you probably are saying, why doesn't she? clean that brush. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to clean the brush. Um, I want to make sure that I'm getting all these different colors and mixes. I think it makes for a more, in my opinion, I like it. I like the way that it makes this um, different colors that I don't even know what's going to come out from that brush that's dirty. Uh, but I like it. I like it better. Remember, this was not cadmium red. It's interesting because it almost looks like the cadmium red. But this was made with alizarin crimson and yellow ochre. So if you do not have cadmium red, uh, you can use it. You can use that uh, combination. And, and you can get very interesting color combinations. All right. So I think that's probably uh, good enough for this uh, tree line that was changing colors. And there was some greenery in the bottom. So to do the green, uh, let me uh, now, oh, I'm sorry, I have clean rags so you can see. Cleaning the brush is just basically, I could use another brush, 
but this has already sort of a greenish tint to it or bias. So let's make some uh, green. And the way that I'm seeing that green is not a very bright green. So I would probably just use this gray that we had before and with yellow ochre. And again, this is alizarin crimson and thalocyanin in green. And with just yellow ochre, it makes uh, an interesting and nice uh, sort of a olive color green that I want to use for some of these areas. Now this is gonna be in the light. So eventually uh, I am going to work a bit more on the, on the light areas. Probably for the water, this is good enough. Um, as a reflection, okay. All right. The building is gonna be a bit more in, it. unfortunately this building is brick in the image that I actually am painting. And it's the, it was the same color as the color of the trees. I don't wanna do that. So I'm going to make this a bit more of a salmon color. I think that's gonna work because the light is hitting it. And there's some, actually some windows that have a very bright, like turquoise blue. So one thing I can do is now go for that turquoise blue. And to make that, having thalocyan in green is a very good start for a blue like that. So what I'm going to do is take a new, uh, a clean brush exactly the same as I was using for the orange. Size six, Simply Simmons flat. So now what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of this um, green, this thalocyanin green, and I am going to use a lot of white. I think I'm gonna have to get some more white out uh, from there and a little bit of ultramarine blue and this makes a really nice color for water especially you know some of these uh, canal waters or clean waters these are very nice blues, but this is actually a sort of the blue that I am seeing in these windows. So I'm just gonna go for, I think these were just reflecting the, the very bright light. And they go a little lighter as we go in the back. There's, a, there's really, they are not necessarily all in the same area, but they were really bright. This was, there was a bigger one here. And this was actually like a round top. Well, I, I don't want to dwell on, on these details. It's just making a little bit of an impression that that's the, the blue. And those windows, we could see some of these reflections in the water of some of those windows. So, you know, you don't want to, you don't need to be precise. I don't think you do need to be so precise where to put them, but at least they should make some sense. And then we're gonna use some of this blue and vary the blue with either more ultramarine or more green in this area of the water. And you will see how we're gonna start placing water in here. It is wider as we go to the back. So I'm just sort of uh, picking it with my brush and I don't really know exactly what color is it gonna come. 
So I, I like it that way. There's gonna be a combination of colors. And painting a la prima, you need to make sure you have sufficient paint in your brush so that you don't get, uh, you know, mud and you don't get them mixed all together. So especially blue and orange, they are opposite in the color wheel. So deposit the paint and don't go, don't do like this on top of the orange, because if you do like this on top of the orange, uh, you just, well, you will get mud. And unless you're painting mud, I don't think you want that. Okay. Now, in the front, the water, everything is closer to us is darker and farther away, it's lighter. And so, if, if, for instance, in the, on the sky, it will be darker in, in the top and lighter towards the horizon. And same thing happens with water. Water is going to be darker closer to us and they were very nice uh, swirling waves in here of this canal water probably the boats were just coming in and out or maybe the wind who knows so what i'm gonna do is I'm just going to consolidate this color or this mix of colors and make more. So white, blue. Now this is more on the uh, ultramarine blue bias, so why not? Yeah, we can we can play with the waves in here. And uh, you know, in the, in the back, the waves are smaller than in the front. And this was probably a bit too white. So we just, uh, Put a bit more on top and I'm just trying to um, follow the idea of the, the wavy uh, feeling of this canal water and definitely uh, the, the blue was really uh, showing up really beautiful. I think it's nice to put more of that blue and as you can see sometimes I just go directly uh, to the canvas and I'm mixing it on the canvas surface or the surface of the canvas. So we get all these sort of waves and feeling of, of water movement in here. There was a, a bright area around here of, of waves and it's just sort of on top, just a little bit like that. Okay, now in the boat, which we haven't painted yet, uh, we are going to have, like I said, there's like a golden, golden area, very nice golden uh, reflection, but the inside of the boat looks more like a blue, blue thing. And I, without painting details, I just want to sort of give the idea of a structure that was like that, something like that. And well, the, I think there was a darker thing there that could be like an opening for, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So I don't want to go on making my life very difficult by trying to paint what I don't know exactly what it is. I'm just painting a little bit of what I see. And as, as you can see, I'm just 
putting the, the waves in here of this water a little bit more. Blue and orange side by side have a powerful contrast for our eyes. I'm gonna make a sky which is gonna be a simple sky. So um, I don't wanna, in other words, uh, there was no, no sort of a, there was no interesting sky, in other words. Uh, this was a pretty sunny day in fall, a little cold, but very sunny. There were no clouds or you know, interesting reflections in on the sky. So I'm just going to make it more of a water and and fall colors painting rather than a sky painting. So the sky pretty much is a little bit of one of the colors that we had for the water. And as I mentioned, as you come closer to the horizon, there's more white. So I just used the straight white in here. And I am picking up some of that orange. It's not intentional, but it it's okay. Uh, if you do that, um, because it's a la prima, just uh, continue painting and, and mixing it. So now I have the option of making this edge of the building a little bit more blurred rather than a straight edge, uh, which I think it's, it's probably gonna work better because it's a bit too dark. And I think I want to make that because the sun was hitting it, I think I want to make that a bit less um, straight. So let's see how it works. I might not be able to do it. All right, and here I'm just losing those and behind this tree. So I think it's gonna be more of the white it's just around this tree. And maybe if this tree is gonna be like the the star of the show, which is what I thought originally, but I'm not sure anymore if it's the star of the show or not. Um, if that's going to be it, I think I need to change a little bit the reflection on the water. Just add maybe a little bit more of um, an accent there. And definitely uh, this is becoming too dark, so I'm just going to make it lighter just using straight out of well not out of the two but of the palette straight white and this is um, sort of trees so i just wanted to instead of having them square just showing that they have sort of an organic shape by painting negative and you've seen in other videos that I have that I do like the um, the sky holes where I sometimes can add some elements of, you know, tree trunks in there and maybe here. I don't even know what I'm painting there. It was supposed to be a building, but um, I didn't want it to be a building. So I think it looks better if it's more like organic. Same as for the reflection. And here we can just go. And then in here for this um, tree, we should also, without too much definition, see how I'm picking up a lot of the orange. So you need to wipe it out and it's gonna be lighter. Uh, we're gonna just make some sky holes they're called because what we are painting is what you can see through did you see the sky through the leaves of uh, trees 
um, uh, I like to call it more like negative painting, which is true. I mean, you, I am painting right now sort of the sky around the tree. Um, but when I do that in other areas is basically negative painting because you paint around the shape to define that particular shape. So, you know, I am getting now a bit of the orange, which is, I am using that to my advantage to try to sort of make it look uh, more blurred, if you want to. Uh, I don't want it like too well defined. So blurring things oftentimes, in, in, in my opinion, oh, I put too much of that red in there. Um, yeah, blurring things, uh, I think, makes for a more interesting image of what we're seeing. And if I don't like that, if I liked it better as a straight line, I can always come back and do it. All right, so uh, what do we need to do now? Let's just um, clean up a little bit this area. And all of these colors I keep uh, because it's very useful to have the colors that you have already mixed and use them in your whole painting. The building color, like I said, I wanted to do like more of a sort of a grayish tone towards the yellow. Um, so I don't want to have it in brick color. So why not using some of this? I just wiped it on the, on the brush because it's difficult for me to use this vertical palette. <laughs> I'm still getting used to it. So this is too green. What do we do to uh, make the green look less green? Well, we can add a bit of red. And with a bit of red, and of course the brush already has all that light blue. So let's see how this looks. I think this is gonna work fine. So again, not very descript, but I wanted it to be a little bit lighter. So maybe adding a bit more of this, especially for, for the back. Okay, and a bit more, and maybe Maybe just mix a little bit of that sky color into here. It's going to make it, in my mind, uh, better because I wanted to sort of lose a little bit that edge of the building with the sky uh, and sort of say, where does the building start and where does the sky start? And just making it that that idea of blurring uh, these edges is a good idea for putting things farther away and also taking away from uh, your attention um, in, the, in the light. And as you can see, I am leaving some of that dark area behind and it's, it's okay that some of this red is popping in. Yeah, I like that color. So for the building. I think it works better than having had the more greenish and darker color. So now again in here I am going to try to define that these trees are in front by painting around these areas and hopefully give the impression that the building is behind those trees. Okay, and sometimes what I recommend when painting architectural elements is make the size, I mean, that's because I'm not a professional painter and nobody is commissioning me to paint an exact replica of this particular building. So what I was saying is make the size of your elements, uh, the size of your brush, and 
that way you have an easier time at trying to make these paints work. Um, and, it, you know, I could be using a smaller brush, but as mentioned, I don't want to use a smaller brush because I don't want to go into too many details. Um, okay, now with this color, I am going to just uh, refine a bit of what's behind these trees. And I think this color works fine. So what I'm doing is pushing the color out and then scooping it out and without um, making too many definitions I'm just going to work on here I think I think this could give the impression there's tree trunks in there I am painting around what could be perceived as the tree trunks that's what I'm trying to do so the trees are behind and then we have a row of uh, whatever nondescript things that are here. So let's make a few tree trunks. Not all of them are the same size, of course. And there were some areas in here, or there are, because this place exists, that we're getting a bit more of the straight light. So you saw I grabbed uh, this particular uh, mix that I had for some of these trees. I am using dirty colors most of the for most of the painting, and that should work fine, no problem. So let's make a bit more of that sort of a brighter yellow. My brush is dirty. I have not cleaned it, so I'm just using the cadmium and the ochre together with what I had. And let's see what's coming out. So it's coming out a little bit lighter, which is what I was intending. And I think some of these areas could use this lighter color and in some of these areas just define a bit more that you know this could be seeing through some of these trees could be taller than others and I like this sort of a chalky color that uh, I ended up creating for the building I, I think it works well. And I like the thing that I was not planning, but uh, that red that got into there looks like some of these uh, trees could be taller than others, which is perfectly fine. That's actually a natural thing. And now some here. All right, um, I think that we would have to just have a little bit of a reflection in this water of, of this sort of brighter color. And because I'm doing it on a la prima, it is mixing. So it's okay that it is uh, getting darker than what they are reflecting. All right. What else can we do with this painting? It's a little bit of the bright reflection. To do that, I am using again the dirty brush, which might be a good idea or a bad idea. I don't know. I just don't want to get a super bright and unnatural reflection here and this boat was getting a lot of light on this end and of course that was reflecting in the water
And I think, even though I don't see it, I think it would make sense that uh, the light is also reflecting on this end of the boat, maybe making a mistake, but, but I think it would make more sense. I don't know if it looked like a boat, but I don't want to define too much more. I think it looked like something on the water, so that's fine. Uh, all right, uh, that boat has a, a red buoy. I don't know if I want to do it, but let's just uh, try to bring some of the bright uh, accents in some of these areas because they were getting the light and even though they are sort of a orange, very nice orange color. I think we should be getting some more of these uh, brighter, I don't know if I'm making a mistake. Um, I can just work on that. And again, because that looks more like there was uh, the building behind, doesn't it? So let's just um, clean the brush and Yeah, this, this brush has a lot of greens, obviously, because we've been using a lot of green. And what I want to do is use more of the orange accent for our trees. So I am using the other brush that I cleaned um, with water. And I let's see what happens if we use you can see this yes because I know that I I'm using a different size the palette is 9 by 12 and I'm painting on a 10 by 10 so let's just be daring and put these cadmium colors in here for the accents And I don't want to mix it very well on my brush. So this will hopefully just deposit the paint. Yeah, I think I wanted to just I think that makes for a little bit more of the idea of the bright sun hitting there. And because I'm working a la prima, I am having difficulty uh, depositing some of these paint on top of the other paint. Um, I could use linseed oil Artisan brand has, uh, oh, I thought I had the, <laughs> it just got detached, but I have it. It's the Artisan Linseed Oil. So I do have it, but I am hesitant to use it. Normally you can use that to deposit more of these uh, thicker paint on top of the paint that's still not completely um, dry, that it's still, and it's not very tacky yet. So what I'm doing is just making sure that I have these reflections also in, in the water. I hope you can see what I am doing in the bottom here. I just did not want to use the green area or the blue area for orange. So just um, hints of what I just painted and especially on this end. I think we said we needed to have more in there of this particular red. I think it would make 
for a nice um, reflection. And the brush is pretty dirty. I should have probably cleaned it. You're probably going like, oh, stop, stop. What are you doing? Well, yeah. That's, that's my craziness. Um, good thing about painting is that you don't like it. You can always work on it. You can always <laughs> paint on top if you didn't like what uh, came out. All right. I think I'm going to call it done. I need to step back and see how it is uh, working for me. And I think I only see one uh, little area and it is in here that um, I don't quite, I'm not quite happy about how that is looking. So I'm just gently um, adding some dirty white in here. That's very softly and it does have a hint of yellow, which is fine for, you know, the areas closer to the horizon in the sky can, can look a little yellow. Sometimes actually the skies look uh, greenish, but believe it or not, a green sky works uh, well sometimes in, in many paintings, even though, you know, people say don't paint green skies. Well, not everybody, uh, but I've heard some people saying, you don't want your sky green. Well, sometimes uh, it does work. Well, so I hope that you have a good light in, uh, in a, a, a good light in in the video. I am using an umbrella, also it's a Soho umbrella, um, to to block some of the glare from the natural light. I don't have a special lights in my studio. I actually am painting in my kitchen. I have a very good kitchen light and I'm gonna be cooking today. So I better finish the painting and start cooking lamb today. All right, so what did we do? Establish some darks, establish the shapes. I think this is going to be final. I think I'm gonna call it a day. I hope you liked it. There's an idea of a boat and the reflections on the water. Remember, they go down and then for the waves and the sensation of waves, you go horizontal. I think I can just use a bit more of these nice turquoise blue for some of these areas in the water of wavy and the waves are thicker in the bottom than they are um, I mean in the bottom of your painting because as you go closer if they are closer to us they are larger and as they go farther they are smaller and I sometimes just like to move my wrist and as you can see my movement of my hand or I'm actually moving it from the shoulder um, as if as if the waves are moving it and sometimes it's just good to put some of these blue colors from the from the water color of the water into your other areas of course being careful that you're not going to mix that blue with orange or some of the other colors and for these waves i like to establish darks and then come back with lights as you see i'm just grabbing some of the white and just making this uh, waves and you know you just put you know 
on top of the dark you put the lights and vice versa on top of them now this is a little bit lighter but I do like the way that it came in this end area so just a wavy feeling of of the water here and this is something I like a lot about painting water which is you know the buttery feeling of waves and movement and here I just I'm going to put some here I think that also gives more or a better idea that we are seeing our reflection have a very good day I hope you are staying safe and you're healthy and happy and if you decide to do some paintings uh, go ahead and start painting I hope that this can inspire you to do some paintings have fun and have a very good day and check other videos in my channel and subscribe if you like them thank you very much for spending this time with me